The key to wisdom is this, constant and frequent questioning. For by doubting, we are led to question, and by questioning, we arrive at the truth. Peter Abelard, French philosopher of the 12th century. Questions, or rather, asking great questions, is a challenge that many of us face. But it's also an amazing gift if we can figure out the answer to the problem. And I've spent years trying to hone in on how do you really ask a great question? How does this work? Because if you're able to do this correctly, you can get your audience to tell you exactly what you need to know so you can communicate a message that they'll never forget. And that's exactly why in this week's episode of Master Talk, I'm going to be demystifying the process on how to ask the best questions. Hi everyone, my name is Brandon, founder of Master Talk and your go-to channel to mastering your talk. And today we're covering the art of asking great questions. So let's get into it. One disclaimer before getting started. I'm sure you probably guessed There's no hard rules to asking great questions. It's something that you learn over time. And the questions that you ask will always vary based on the conversation that you're having with someone and the person you're speaking to. So bear that in mind. Number one, practice asking questions that you're uncomfortable asking. Look, normal conversation goes something like this. Hey there, how are you? Good, you? Good. What's that even used for anyways? It's such a waste of time. Most of us are conditioned to have surface level conversations. So the only way to practice asking great questions is to ask questions that you don't want to ask. One example is from this book called Zero to One by Peter Thiel. And the question he asks in the book goes as follows. What is the one truth that you believe in that most people disagree with you on. Most people don't want to ask this question because it forces the other person to answer something that is controversial. Because you need to say something that you believe in that you think most people would say, I don't believe that. And that's how you build your muscle as a communicator and as someone who asks great questions. Because if you can ask these types of things, you can have much deeper conversations with people And if you start having deeper conversations with people, you'll want to ask them more meaningful questions. Another thing I want to point out is you'll also get to someone like me and my favorite hobby in the world is asking people uncomfortable questions about their life. So I hope you get there as well. Number two, ask a question that you believe you can't find the answer to online. What's interesting about these types of questions is it forces you to ask something very specific about that person's life or thought process. Another way of explaining this is oftentimes the best questions that we can ask somebody are follow-up questions based on what they've already said. So I'll give you a quick story. When I started working in consulting, which is my corporate job, the CEO of the consulting division was was with us to give us a talk. He was talking about his journey on how he built the practice, the clients he had to get, the challenges he had. It was like a redemption story, right? How he kind of rose up from rags to riches. But he also mentioned in the conversation that he was happily married for 19 years. So most people, when he went to have dinner with all of us that started at the firm at the time, A lot of the people who were next to me were asking the guy the same old questions. So, monsieur, what advice do you have for me? So, monsieur, what pitfalls can I avoid as a consultant? It was the same thing over and over again. You know what I asked him? Well, I sat next to him and he said, so what question do you have for me? I said, well, monsieur, you've been working in the field for a long time. You've had a lot of success. You've obviously worked a lot. But what's the secret to your marriage? I mean, you're happily married for 19 years, but you're working so much. So how did you balance the two? And then he looked at me and he smiled and he started laughing and he said, no one's ever asked me that. And that's the point that I'm driving. Every other person who was sitting in that table were asking stuff that anyone can find online. They were asking things that they can find the answer somewhere else. 
But if you're really curious, and you can ask questions that you would deem uncomfortable, you might find answers that are only going to be available if you ask the right questions. So ask them carefully. And number three, remove the judgment that you have whenever you feel that you shouldn't be asking the question in the first place. Look, asking questions and my ability to do so has really nothing to do with skill, but rather a mindset. Because whenever I don't understand something, I'm always quick to challenge and find the answer. So because of that, 80% of my questions aren't something very specific. Oh, monsieur, you did 19 years of merit. No, it's not, it's not as weaved as it used to be. It was literally, I'm having a conversation with the buddy and the buddy is telling me something and I just go, I have no idea what you're talking about. Could you just clarify that? Just most of society aren't willing to do that because they're afraid of looking lesser than. They're afraid of saying, oh, what will this person think of me if I don't know the answer? Another good example is the person who's filming my videos right now. Whenever I don't understand something about video because I'm not the expert in it, I just ask him. He knows I don't know anything about video, so he says, this is the process, this is what I'm doing. And that curiosity, that muscle that you build to not be afraid to ask any question despite how you look will make other people respect you more for it because you're valuing their time, but also it'll improve your ability to ask more trickier questions like the truth question that I asked from Peter Thiel or the monsieur with the dinner. So build up that resiliency in the same way that you become a master communicator and you're not gonna be afraid to ask any question despite how lesser than you might think of in the beginning. If there's anything that you take away from this video, it's that my favorite hobby in the world is asking people uncomfortable questions, which begs the idea that asking questions aren't supposed to be something fearful or hard, but rather something you look forward to. A lot of my friends like to go to bars and have fun and play loud music, whereas me, my favorite thing to do in the world is have extremely heated debates about live topics that I disagree with someone on. It's the most fun. So if you start to ask weird questions to other people, you'll find interesting people that, will, you'll, that you'll be attracted to essentially, and you can have amazing conversations with them that open the doors to opportunities for both your life and the audiences that you'll serve. As always, if you enjoyed this week's episode of Master Talk, be sure to smash that like button and subscribe to the YouTube channel as well to see more videos like this. If you know someone that just keeps asking you how you're doing all the time, send them this video so that they can be one step closer to asking better questions and hopefully mastering their talk in the process. Take care everyone and see you next time.